What's up everybody, welcome back to channel CodeX, I'm your host Afzil and you're watching MPIN series part 4. In the last tutorial we have seen this MPIN animation where you can add some input or delete something. So today what we're gonna do is create a numpad at the first place. So what I'm gonna do is wrap this material button inside a method. So for that you just right click and say wrap in a method and you can name anything you want. So I'm just going to keep it the default name and we don't need these two extra buttons as of now and I'm going to pass a number to this method which will be displayed on the text of the button and also this will be passed to animation widget to show to the user. Perfect, so our base is ready. Now let's go ahead and create multiple buttons. And for that, I'm going to use grid widget. There are different uh, implementation of grid, but I'm going to use the count method. So here you can specify how many items you want inside a grid. So in cross axis, like I want three columns basically. So cross axis count, I have given three. And for the children, I'm going to use list.generate with nine elements. And for each index, I'll create this build material widget and I'll pass index plus one. So zeroth index, it will be number one. Eighth index, it will be ninth digit. So now we are getting some issue for the size because grid doesn't know how much height it's gonna take. And for that, we can specify shrink wrap true so that it takes the minimum height it requires. And now you can see all the nine buttons are ready. And also I want to change the aspect ratio of the button because all are squares now. So I'll give something like 1.6. So one in the height and 1.6 in the width, something like this. All right. And now I'm going to change the look and feel of the button. So basically I want the text color to be white and the background to be transparent. So just modify some properties and you're going to get something cool just like this one. All right, so now I'm happy with my grid. What I'm gonna do is duplicate this grid for the bottom three buttons where I'm gonna put uh, the backspace and the zero button, right? So this time we'll not use list.generate to generate the buttons. Instead, we're gonna call these methods manually because we want three of them. So first let's try with the zero if it appears or not. And here we have it on the left side. So before that I want some dummy button say for example for fingerprint or face recognition or something like that so i'm just going to add this material button manually over here and we don't have any command as of now and for the child i am going to use icon instead of the text Cool. So you can see how simple it is to create a numpad like this one. And I'm just going to duplicate this material button for the backspace. And of course we have to change the icon. And I'm going to use this rounded backspace which looks perfectly fine. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and run this application one more time and see whether everything is working or not. And of course it will not work. The delete functionality will not work because we have not defined the on press command. So I'm going to say mpincontroller.delete and now you can see that my system is running so slow that I'm getting system UI and not responding. So anytime you see animation glitch, it means that my system is running slow. It's not the flutter which is producing uh, glitchy animation, right? So, okay, let's see whether the back animation works or not. Yeah, the delete button. So it seems to work, but uh, I'm getting some exception at the debug console. And there's something wrong inside the delete button. Let's go ahead and check that inside our widget, what we are doing wrong. So basically we are checking for the MPIN length. And of course the length will be zero when you don't have anything. So we should write something like, if MPIN is not empty, then do this stuff. Otherwise don't do anything. So if you have data, if it's not empty, then only reduce the length and animate and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and run one more time. Now let's see whether we get some exception logs. Perfect, we are not getting any exception, which means we are deleting only when there's a data. So now you can see we can type infinitely and there's no response. So now I'm going to split this condition into two parts. So basically what I'll do, I'll 
create the same condition but first half will only check for less than and second else if condition will check for equal to equal to condition so what it's gonna do if it's less than do animation if it's equal to do the animation again but do something else and what is that it's to reset the m pin to its initial value and now let's give it a run and see how does it look with these two modified condition now whenever you type completely you're gonna type it again from the beginning so we need to write a logic which will give us a trigger that input has been completed before that it's time to give shout out to our new channel member Ahmed Mughalis, thank you so much for taking membership and you can also support channel Code X by taking YouTube membership or buy me coffee on the link given in the description below. Let's go ahead once again inside our widget file and create a function which will trigger once the input has been completed. So I'm going to define a function and let's name it something meaningful on completed maybe. And let's also pass this on completed method inside a constructor so that a widget can provide implementation for that all right so here inside add input whenever we reach to the condition where input length is exactly same the widget m pin length so we're gonna trigger this method and basically it will provide the m pin entered by the user to the calling method it's that simple so let's go ahead inside our page and find out the widget we are using and here i'll define on completed and it takes anonymous method and which will give us in return the final m pin value you can name anything you want i'm just going to say m pin and what i'm going to do next is just print it out on the console so we can see what we have entered and here you can see what i have entered perfect it's working totally fine now let's go ahead and give some condition like uh, if the m pin matches with one two three four five it means it's a correct m pin otherwise it's going to be wrong input so i'm just going to create one alert dialog real quick to just demonstrate the success and failure case of m pin widget so here i'm entering one two three four five which is a success case and you got this dialog which means you can take the user to the next page and now we are going to handle the error case where you have entered the wrong m pin so let's go ahead and just define it the place where we're going to write the logic and in fact it's going to be a very interesting animation because we're going to wiggle the entire input the entire m pin widget so let's go ahead and define one more method let's say function which doesn't take any argument and we just want to notify that there's been some wrong input so i'm going to name it notify wrong input and as we do always we have to create our implementation for that and that we will link with the controller instance simple isn't it now let's go ahead and put null check as well as we did inside our mpin animation widget it's just a good practice to put a null check uh, in the place where you can expect that it may go null now let's define what's going to happen when you trigger notify wrong input we need to animate right and for that we need animation controller so let's go ahead and define one animation controller i'm going to name it something like something very big wrong input animation controller you can name whatever you want it's just matter of the test and we have to initialize that inside our init state so I'm going to say wrong input animation controller is equal to animation controller which then takes the synchronization and for that we have to make the state ticker provider instance and we can do that easily with single ticker provider with state mixing. Now what it does of course I have explained that in previous video so go ahead and watch that. So now our issue has been fixed i'm going to provide some duration also to our controller how much time it's going to take to complete the animation so 300 millisecond works fine always so our controller is almost initialized what i'm going to do add some listeners so you can simply go ahead and put double dot to access the same instance you don't have to write name again and again so you can just put double dot 
And now what I'm doing over here is adding listeners. So first listener is basically anything happens inside a controller, any changes, it's gonna set the state so it will refresh the screen. And secondly, what I'm doing is adding status listener. What it does, it gives you the status, what is the current status of the animation. So what I'm going to do is put a check. If animation has completed, I'm going to reverse it so that it repeats itself. And I know that it looks a little bit complicated, but it's very easy. We just initialize it. We added two listeners and that's it. We have the controller ready with us. Now what we're gonna do is define actual animation. So let's go ahead and define animation of type double because we're gonna change the offset in X direction. So I'm going to say animation of double and let's give it a name wiggle animation. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so similar way I'm going to initialize it. So this, this part is going to be easy, trust me. Wiggle animation is of type tween animation because we're gonna animate between two values. Of course, it's of type double. So it begins on the value zero, zero, and it ends to the value 24 or 30, whatever it looks great to you. And then we're gonna say animate with the controller. Now this is something which I'll come later in the tutorial to show you what happens when you just animate with the controller or when you provide curve animation. So let's go ahead and proceed with simple controller, which is our wrong input animation controller. Makes sense. And now let's go ahead and use this animation inside our widget tree. So I'm going to wrap this row, complete row inside a transform widget. So I'll say transform dot translate and we have to provide the offset like how much pixel it's going to transform. Now we only have to care about the X axis. So I'll use the animation value for X and for Y. I'm just going to put the zero zero because we don't want to change the value in Y direction. Now we got some issue. No worries. We'll run it again before that. If you remember the page where we have to call the wrong animation, let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to say mpin controller dot notify wrong input, right? And then I'm going to read on the application and I'm going to purposefully write wrong mpin value. And let's see what happens. Nothing really happens. Okay, so let's go ahead and find out what is the issue. And the issue because we are not triggering the animation, we are not at all calling any forward method. So let's go ahead and do that on the controller forward. Perfect. And we'll run it one more time. So I'm going to enter the wrong value one more time. And let's see if we get something nice. So the animation happened, but it was too slow. Just have a look. See, it's, it's very slow. And that is something which I wanted to tell you with what happens when you define a curve or what happens when you just use the controller for animate. So now our animation is plain. It's just changing from 0, 0 to 24. Now, instead of just passing the controller, I'm going to use curved animation because I want to provide my custom curve, how that value changes from 0, 0 to 24 with what speed it changes. So you can use the curve animation, define your controller and in the curve parameter, you can define a lot of curves like elastic, bounds, and there are many more to check. So when you provide elastic, it's gonna look something like this one. Perfect. And this is what we wanted. This is the wiggle animation which we were trying for. And let me just give it a correct input as well to check whether it's working or not. Perfect. We have everything working with us. But wait, before you leave, let me show you something interesting. Even if you get a wrong input, the input fields doesn't really reset. So to reset them, we have to delete the values. And if you just delete with the animate method, it's going to animate as well. So like the bouncing animation, the wiggle animation, everything will be happening at once. And we don't really want that. So for that, I'm just going to create one more method called clear and what it will do it will do exactly same like animate but it will not call controller dot forward and of course it doesn't need any input so it just clears the field it's just going to make that pin blank and let's also attach the implementation to the controller now let's go back to the widget and inside notify wrong input, what we're gonna do is for each controller, we're gonna trigger this clear animation. So I'm just going to write animation controllers. Come on, yep. For each and instead of element, let's call it controller. So it makes more sense. 
and for each controller i'm just going to call the clear method so that it doesn't really animate but it reset the value which we have just implemented okay so i'm going to input wrong and pin once again and you see it works like a charm so everything is working fine i have one small enhancement to do just a last thing so you see that the last input animation the circle is growing at the same time it starts wiggling so for that what i'm going to do is wait for 300 millisecond let the circle shrink to its original position so let's go ahead and mark this add input a sync so we can use await and i'm just going to delay for 300 millisecond before notifying to the widget that the input has completed so now let's go ahead and run it for the final time we are done with all the changes so i'm going to add wrong input and we see the wiggle animation let's go ahead and add correct input and see what happens we got the success message subscribe the channel for more such videos and if you have enjoyed make sure to give it a thumbs up share with others in a facebook group or someone you know who's learning flutter if you have any feedback leave that in a comment section below and i will see you guys in the next one